All right, so our next speaker is Matt uh, Koskinen. He is uh, the local Boston ambassador to Zcoin, and he'll be uh, talking a little bit about their Lelantis protocol and diving into how that's sort of improving the zero coin. So let's hear it one time uh, before he starts speaking for Matt, and he'll introduce himself and get into his speech. Great. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Um, yes, my name is Matt Koskinen. I am the Zcoin ambassador to Boston. Um, it's great to be here talking to you today about Zcoin. Um, we often get confused with being a fork of Zcash, so I found it interesting that I'm following Paige today. Uh, fun coincidence there. So, But it's an understandable um, misunderstanding because we're kind of forged from the same fire, if you will. So Zcoin is a privacy coin, uh, and we use the Zerocoin protocol, which was um, uh, comes out of a paper that was authored by Matthew Green, uh, Ian Myers, Christina Garman, um, and they are also the authors of the Zero Cash paper. So um, we are, I guess I would say, a Asian-based coin uh, more than Zcash is. Uh, maybe got a little bit more awareness here in the United States. So um, there's a lot to talk about today. I'm going to kind of talk about privacy first, why privacy is important really quick, uh, but mostly focus on what do you need when you want to have privacy on the blockchain. Okay. All right. So um, I don't know if anyone has seen the talk on YouTube by Ian Myers, uh, one of the authors of the Zero Coin paper, as I mentioned, in Zero Cash. Uh, it's entitled Satoshi Has No Clothes. So he talks a lot about why we want to have privacy on the blockchain, OK? Um, I would answer that with a question, pretty simply. Would you want to put your uh, bank statement out there on the internet or out there on the blockchain? Probably not, right? It's information that you want to keep uh, private and personal. So what we do is we offer a solution for privacy on the blockchain. So what do we need when we are trying to achieve privacy on the blockchain? Well, a high anonymity that stands the test of time. So what do I mean by that? Well, there are lots of ways to uh, achieve anonymity. Uh, one is basically hiding in a crowd, okay? So if you have a large anonymity set, uh, you can think of that as like a large crowd that you are hiding in. If the crowd is small, maybe five to 10 people, it's not as easy to disappear into, okay? so. A big crowd that you can hide in is one thing that we're looking for. Uh, you also want to have good performance that can scale. So small proof sizes uh, that don't occupy much space on the blockchain. We'll get back to that in a minute. You also want to have quick verification times, uh, something that is easy to use, a good user experience, and minimal trust requ required. So Zcoin has what is called a trusted setup. OK, so we'll come back to that idea a little bit later. Um, if you have a trusted setup that is strong, that is a good thing. Zcash has uh, that as well. Um, but if you can totally eliminate the trusted setup, where trust is just no longer part of the equation and you can rely on the math uh, and the cryptography and feel safe and secure, that is probably the best solution. So there we go. So what is ZeroCoin? Well, um, it was originally intended to be part of the Bitcoin uh, protocol. But when it became clear that that wasn't going to happen, it wasn't going to be incorporated, our founder, Purim and Insom, went and founded Zcoin. So he studied with Matthew Green uh, at Johns Hopkins. And essentially what Zerocoin does is you've got your base layer coin, and then you have the ability to create an anonymous transaction using the Zerocoin protocol. So if I wanted to... Um, if I wanted to spend a Bitcoin to you and I didn't want anyone to be able to see, essentially what I would do with Zcoin is that I would create a mint transaction, okay? And so the mint would then go into our RSA accumulator and that is your crowd that you are hiding with, okay? And when you decide to spend that coin, it comes out of the accumulator and you effectively break the transaction from that original coin that you used or denomination of coins with your new coins. Okay, so it breaks the transaction link um, from your old coins to new coins. So you cannot look back on the blockchain to see where those coins have been. So Technology is improving every day, as I'm sure we're all aware of, and there are tools and firms out there that are analyzing the blockchain uh, and getting better at it. So we feel this is a great way to be able to make it very, very difficult or impossible for anyone to be able to analyze how you are spending your money. And that is a good thing because you don't want your competitors in business to see uh, who or how much you are paying uh, for your suppliers. If on a personal level, 
do you have money and you don't want people to know how much money that you have, um, it's good to be able to keep those transactions private. So we use zero knowledge proofs, but we do not use ZK snarks as Zcash does. So uh, similar, but different. All right, so here we go. So if you take a look here, this diagram, is my pointer gonna work? It'll probably be help if I, help if I turned it on. Uh, if you imagine this diagram right here as Bitcoin and this one as Zcoin, and we have block one, block two, um, we can see a denomination of coins here and we can track its progress through the blockchain. So when we look at Zcoin, things look the same down here, but right here a mint takes place. So I go into my wallet, I create a mint transaction of one, five, 10 coins, uh, I'm tied to fixed denominations right now, and I burn that coin up. So think of that like um, a key. So that coin reaches the end of the road, I get a serial number, it goes into the accumulator. In the accumulator, there is a box with my new denomination of coins on it, and only I can get to it, and what happens with Zcoin uh, is you basically put on a disguise, and at some point in the future, you go and unlock your box, you get your new set of coins, and then you bring them back to the base layer, okay? So when they come back to the base layer, all that you can see when you look uh, on the block explorer is that they came out of the accumulator. All right, so your anonymity set is important there because we have an accumulator for each denomination of coins that you burn right now with the zero coin protocol. But that is going to change uh, when we implement Lolantis. And that is our new protocol that is coming uh, in about 12 to 18 months, I would say. So used to this working, but it's just my pointer. Okay, so does ZeroCoin satisfy essential elements of a blockchain privacy system? Well, we have a high anonymity set uh, that encompasses all the people that are also minting coins in the accumulator. For performance, our proof sizes are about 25 kilobytes right now, so performance um, not as good as it could be. So I believe Zcash is around two kilobytes uh, with their proof, so their size is a lot smaller, and that is going to improve performance significantly, especially as things scale up uh, when more transactions are happening. So our proof times are okay, uh, but they could also be improved as well. Ease of use, well, as I said, you have to mint and spend in fixed denominations right now with Zcoin. So one, 10, five, or 100. So if you wanted to mint and spend 60 coins, you would have to do that in more than one uh, transaction. And we do have a trusted setup. Uh, so our trusted setup is based on RSA cryptography, which was developed right here at MIT in the 1970s. And the parameters that we use come out of the RSA factoring challenge that took place in the early 1990s. So there's a lot of other um, systems out there that rely on this form of cryptography, uh, and so far we feel it is very, very well battle tested. So if you need to have a trusted setup, we feel very secure in our current parameters. However, we're trying to move things forward, so uh, we are going to fix that with Lolantis. So what about zero cash? How does it compare? This question often comes up, as I mentioned, we are often confused with being a fork of Zcash. Well, their anonymity set is very high as well. So their performance uh, proofs are about one kilobyte to two kilobytes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so their performance is gonna be much better, okay? Uh, ease of use, Paige was talking about the um, shielded addresses earlier, and they do not require fixed denominations as we do right now, so their performance is better there as well. Uh, but there has been some discussion about the setup at Zcash. Um, it's very complicated. Um, I think that if you have to have a trusted setup, theirs is quite good, as is ours as well. But when you have trust that's involved, um, there can be some questions. So that is why we are moving away from it when we get to Lolantis. So Lolantis builds on zero coins construction. Uh, we're gonna use one out of many proofs, bullet proofs, range proofs. Our cryptographer, Aram Javanian, um, was the author of the Lolantis paper, and you can find that at lolantis.io. Uh, if there are any cryptographers in the audience, uh, he would very much appreciate anybody's feedback. So um, if you wanna talk to me about where to find that information, see me after. Um, so what are the things that Lolantis is going to solve? Well, uh, we are no longer going to be bound to fixed denominations when we implement Lolantis, okay? Uh, so you will be able to burn and spend any amount when you mint and spend coins. Uh, it doesn't uh, require a separate accumulator for each denomination. There will be one accumulator. Um, and you will also 
eventually be able to transfer coins in their burnt state. So I could effectively send a mint to you as opposed to having to bring it back to the transparent layer as I do right now. So why do we need Lelantis? Well, decoy-based systems like Monero and Mimblewimble, they give you a small anonymity set that you were mixing with, so a small crowd, right? So the smaller your crowd, the harder it is to disappear. So if someone really wants to take a hard look at what you've been doing out there on the blockchain, uh, we feel that it would be a lot easier to do with systems like that. So um, ZK Snarks, as used in Zcash, uses uh, has a high level of anonymity and a high level of performance, um, but there is that trusted setup um, as we still currently have. So how does a Lolantis Mint work? Well, the first time I looked at this, I wasn't quite sure what to make of it, but I've been on the phone with Aaron, my cryptographer, quite a bit. Um, essentially, with Lolantis, you will have uh, the ability to mint any amount that you want, as I said. And so that, let's say you wanted to mint 35 coins, there's probably going to be more than one input that accounts for that number. So let's say we have two inputs of 17 coins and 18 coins, and they're gonna come into the balance proof there. So the balance proof does not want to show, or it, it aims to not show what the denominations are that are inside, where that, um, coin came from or those coins came from when the outputs come out. So the balance proof shows that the inputs always balance with the outputs. If they did not, it would mean that coins were being made out of thin air and that is ultimately what we want to avoid, okay? So we currently have an auditable supply with the zero coin and we will still have a supply that we can audit when we implement Lilantis, okay? So we need to hide what is happening with these mints and spends. We wanna hide information, we wanna hide denominations, uh, but prove that there's as many coins uh, as we began with when we get out on the other side, okay? So that's effectively what's going on here. So we also have batching improvements. Um, as the accumulators scale up with transactions, uh, this is a way to verify transactions and improve performance as the numbers increase. So if you take a look at these boxes right here, each one of these is a bigger anonymity set and it breaks down the basically the cost or the time taken to verify each transaction in a batch as the batches get larger. So if you take a look at this comparison chart, you see Monero, you see Zcash, you see ZeroCoin, you see Lilantis. So if you look at the anonymity set, you can see that there's a big improvement here from ZeroCoin to Lilantis. Our trusted setup will be removed. Our proof times will come down to two kilobytes. Our generation proofs, uh, or our proof generation time, I should say, uh, will be one and a half to three seconds. Um, verification time, 13 to 68 milliseconds. And our cryptographic uh, assumptions are pretty well studied. We feel very confident um, that it is not new, untested cryptography, if you will. So why do we need Lilantis? Well, uh, it's going to improve performance, it's going to improve um, the, the fact that we are bound to fixed denominations right now. It's going to maintain a supply of coins that we can audit. And ultimately we will be able to send mints from one person to another. So quite a lot there. Um, I tried to go as fast as I could because I know I've only got about 15 minutes. So. Um, you can check out the paper at lolantis.io. I think we've got that right here. You can also email the Zcoin team at um, team at zcoin.io. You can certainly find me afterwards if you want to talk about anything or have any questions. If you want to get in touch with anyone on our team, Ruben Yap is our chief operating officer. Uh, Porman Insom is our founder. Aram Janvanian is our chief cryptographer. Uh, and they would love to hear from any of, you, any of you with questions or comments that you have about anything that we talked about today um, or anything at all. So um, with that, I think I'm good. And I think I might have time for a question or two. Uh, no? Uh, yeah. No. We're running a little okay, bit. okay. But thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.